All right, our next storyteller, it goes back all the way to the first crossing. So when I first had the idea to do the crossing um, was after learning about this connection to the ocean, right, taking Piper paddling. She was in a cheer practice. I was in a bookstore flipping through a magazine. It was a paddling magazine. I saw some paddlers out in Hawaii doing long-distance crossings, and I thought, man, that's really interesting. And the National CF Foundation had nominated me to participate in a fundraising event, but they said, but you got to come up with a fundraiser. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I thought, man, I bet you could paddle from the Bahamas to Florida because of the Gulf Stream. And that was the beginning of the idea. And when I started sharing that with some friends, one of my friends said, hey, well, you need to go meet this guy, Kyle, because he's like the shark whisperer. And I was like, oh, okay, I got to go meet Kyle. So I called up Kyle and... Um, and we had a great first meeting, and, and, it, and it took off from there. So, ladies and gentlemen, the next storyteller is Kyle Igneri. Check, check. No. Um, wow, 11 years. Um, it's crazy to think um, where it started and where it's at. Um, it really is humbling to stand up here in front of so many people um, that were just that are just as willing today to do what we did way back then. Um, I never thought so. A little bit more about how me and Travis met. Our first meeting is I had a I had a small little paddleboard business over by Peanut Island and a regular client, um, Jillian, and uh, she says, "Hey, my friend Travis wants to paddle across the Gulf." And I'm like, not thinking. I'm like, why is he going to paddle to Texas? I'm like, I thought the Gulf of Mexico. She goes, no, the Gulf Stream. I said, oh. I said, that's doable. I said, send him down. I'd love to talk to him. And he came down, and he had that hair at that time that, like, came here and flipped out. And he was all bushy-tailed and bright-eyed. Hey, I want to do it. And um, he told me a little bit about Piper and what's going on and the, the connection to the salt water. And then he asked me the question, do you think I can do it? And um, I'm almost pretty sure my response was not by yourself. And I saw that look, that, that Travis look of excitement come over his face. You want to do it with me? I said, absolutely. <laughs> Nothing else I'd want to do. And, and, you know, it's like it's hard to admit, but at that time I wasn't in it for the love. Like we didn't, uh, it, none of that had been established yet. I was just another wild-eyed, uh, bushy-tailed <laughs> whippersnapper ready for adventure. And, um, you know, I wanted to put it on my bucket list. Yeah, I paddled from the Bahamas uh, to Florida. And, um, and what it's turned into from then till now um, is awesome. Not only that, but it's like if I, if I go through the years of the participation, of my participation in the event, um, it, it's, just, it's cool to see for me how the event is just like woven through the fabric of my life without me even doing it intentionally. Just, uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's by happenstance. I, I would more like to, likely to classify it as uh, like divine intervention. Um, you know, at that time, I, I believe Travis, you know, I had to meet me and I had to meet him for a lot of this to happen. Um, like I said, I, I had a little paddleboard business, so I had an unlimited supply of paddleboards. And uh, we got to do all the training we wanted to. At the time, I was paddleboarding often. I think I did like five laps around Peanut Island every single day for like three years. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that first year, like, it was crazy. I never thought it would happen again. I thought it was just going to be like a one-off event and like just something we got to talk about when we were old. And, um, but you guys... You guys know who Travis is, so that's not the way it, it, it ended. Um, you know, it, it's just like, just going, that was my first time to the Bahamas, which was exciting, um, with a whole bunch of people I didn't know. I remember our two boat captains there, just as cool as they could get. They had matching boats, 34 Ventures. If you guys are in the boat market, they're probably some of the most seaworthy boats out there. Um, and those boats took us across in seven-foot conditions. And I'll never forget Travis um, when he was sick on the boat. And I was, oh, disclaimer, I didn't get sick that first trip either. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget 
And it still sticks with me today. I was real concerned about him because he was like, he was green and puking. And I'm like, dude, are you going to be okay? And he like muttered. He goes, this is nothing compared to what Piper's going to have to go through. And, you know, and it's not the first time I've seen him like that. And there's been a few times since. And every time I see that or every time I feel like quitting, um, those words echo in my head that, um, Man, it's, it's nothing compared to what some people are going through. And, uh, you know, this, that picture right there. Are we going to do my photo slide? Come on. I sent you guys like 10. Oh, you rolled through them already? Oh. <laughs> this year, this was 2019. I had a lot of fun this year. This was like, uh, I call this uh, the pirate's life year. Um, I got the paddle behind a sailboat. I was a late registered uh, I didn't participate in 2017 or 2018. Um, I was dealing with some, some poor life decisions. I had a, a, some personal battles I was going through those years. And, uh, and that even pulled into 2019. And I was just kind of crawling out of my hole as the crossing was approaching. And, uh, you know, with like a month before registration, I called. I'm like, dude, I need to do it this year. That was like my little glimmer of hope. If I can get out there and do the crossing again, I might have a shot at getting better. Um, and, you know, I didn't have any resources at the time. And, uh, you know, they're like, you know, there's this one captain. He's got a sailboat, but we told him he couldn't because it's a sailboat. But if there's anyone that can do it behind a boat, it's you. So I, <laughs> I, I arranged it. I met the sailboat captain, and uh, we made it happen. And it took us 27 hours to get to Bimini. <laughs> just to get there it took us longer to get there than it did to get back <laughs> and um you know like the look on my face right there I, I just heard Travis say it this year for the first time at the poolside that 2013 was his coping mechanism he was a dad dealing with a sick daughter figuring out how to cope with it so he paddled across the ocean 2019 it was my coping mechanism um you know and and I went iron that year. I paddled beach to beach behind a sailboat, which you guys don't see in this picture. Just out of the, the picture, there's a dinghy getting towed behind the sailboat. So the night we were supposed to leave, it was a little, there's a squall that passed through. We are supposed to take the dinghy and like flip it upside down on top of the sailboat and strap it down. But we couldn't do that because it was storming. So we had to tow it back. So every time I fell off the board and I would pop my head up, boom, I got smacked by the dinghy in tow. And, and I look back at it now, and it's just, that was just like God's hand, like boom, like smarten up, boy. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and it, it's exactly the type of paddle I needed that year. There's no GPS, no autopilot. We had a flashlight, a compass, like a round sailboat compass, and a handheld GPS with coordinates to like follow, like, you know, 187 degrees northwest like point the boat that way and let's go and um and that's how 2019 went and um it, it was it was awesome um I remember I packed all the food I'll say this about the captain uh he's like this old Cuban guy that lives on a sailboat that's anchored next to Blue Heron Bridge and uh he wanted like fr I brought all the food and he goes hmm rabbit food. He was, he was not impressed with my sweet potatoes and my, and my boiled beets and uh, <laughs> my carrot sticks. But, um, you know, then a few years, I think 2020, you know, we all know what happened then. And then um, the next time I got to go back, I got to go back with my girlfriend. Um, we had gotten a boat and we decided to go and participate and just volunteer the setup crew. And, um, and that was cool. I, w I don't feel like I was very heavily involved. I did the little volunteer part as much as we could the time we were there, and our, uh, one of our motors blew. So we had to leave um, Bimini early and come back on one motor, but what a blessing because it was absolute sheet of glass. Like You could see the, the reflection of the clouds in the surface of the ocean was how calm it was. And um, I got to spend like 13 or 14 hours... Uh, with my wife on the bow of our boat, just coming back across. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a, a spoiler alert. It's my wife now. Um, <laughs> and, uh, 
And then, uh, but the coolest part is I, I might have discovered a calling. If I never go to Bimini again and I, I get to work the beach landing, I'm going to volunteer now as the MC. So I went back and I got to be, you know, I tag teamed the MC portion of the event with the guy that was already there. And that was a lot of fun. So it was, that was a unique year where I got to do some Bimini and some beach landing all in one year. And then... Um, the following was our 10-year anniversary. Um, and that, that's when I started to realize, like when I started to get humbled by the whole thing and, and seeing what it's become and getting to paddle with Travis again and Shane again. And, you know, our fourth partner couldn't make it, so we paddled with um, Scott out of North Carolina, who's got a double lung transplant. And just to, just to be able to see the tangibility of, of what we're doing here... Um, uh, gives me goosebumps right now thinking about it. But getting to paddle with those guys again um, as a relay team, it, it, was, it was fantastic. And then, uh, you know, that year I, um, I went there again with my girlfriend, but I paddled back with my fiancé. Uh, so Bimini is near and dear to me. I proposed at um, Bimini Sands. <laughs> and... Um, and then this last year, uh, I went back with, there with my wife and my friends. And, um, you know, I was supposed to be a safety boat captain, but like a turn of, of events, divine inspiration, I got to paddle with Travis again. Um, so that was three out of five times that I've got to paddle with, with Travis. Um, and it all just brings it back home for me. Um, you know, if I got to learn anything from this past year is, uh, is what it means to just go with the flow. You know, it's like I'm in a position in my day job where I get to, like, I'm a ball, all right? I, you know, I'm in charge. And, uh, man, what a blessing it was just to be an Indian and not to have to be a chief and just to show up and to give my time freely wherever I was needed. Didn't matter what you needed. Well, okay, we'll do it. Um, Man, what a relief that was to not have to be in charge and just get that, just to be of service. You know, I've spent so many years of my life taking selfishly. And uh, to have this to be one of my opportunities to be of service and, and give back, there's not another foundation I'd want to do it with. And, um, you know, I, I saw Piper's paddled with her boyfriend first, and then I just saw Travis was itching, like, come on, kid, get off the board. That's my daughter out there. <laughs> And to see the look on his face when they got to paddle side by side for the first time after doing this over a period of 11 years is a, is a moment in time I'll never forget. Um, and that's what's beautiful about this event. There's so many moments in time that I'll never forget. And it's, it's just, it's technically just something we do for one, for one day. It's a one day event. We, we prepare for it all year, but the, it all happens in one day. And, you know, in five, one Five days for one day, I've got a lifetime of memories in just five short days. And uh, for that, I'm going to forever be grateful and forever uh, do my part. Thanks, guys.